Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to uh, make a start. Thank you for taking the time to connect with us today and take part in our What's in the Suite series of webinars covering Oracle NetSuite. If you've missed any of our previous sessions and you'd like to review them, please let us know in the chat and we can organize to send the links to the previous webinars to you at the end of the session. Alternatively, feel free to visit our Fusion 5 website in the Resource Center where you'll find recordings of all of our past webinars to date. Today's webinar focuses on current proofing your business whilst undertaking a project to future proof it as well. A little bit on about how we'll structure this webinar today. Firstly, we'd like to briefly introduce Fusion 5, who we are and how NetSuite fits into our business for those of you that don't know us too well. We'd also like to talk a little bit about whilst we're undertaking a project to future-proof your business from a software applications and processes standpoint, how we can also ensure that we're current proofing it as well. We'll then take you through a live demonstration of NetSuite covering areas such as creating custom fields and records to extend data capture in NetSuite. Uh, we'll discuss the ease of integrating NetSuite with other platforms and multiple data sources to use NetSuite as a single source of truth, and also how we can take advantage of NetSuite's One World platform to help support business acquisition, expansion into new markets and jurisdictions, etc. We'll then head across to a conversation with one of our customers, Mitesh Patel from Gumala Aboriginal Corporation. Our panelists today are myself, Joel Nicholson. I am covering sales and solutions for Oracle NetSuite and our financial planning and analysis software. I'm based out of Brisbane. We also have Karen Prinsloo with us as well. It's based out of our Perth office. We'll also be interviewing Maitesh Patel from Gumala Aboriginal Corporation today on their recent experiences with NetSuite implementation. Taking us through our demo today is Chloe Patterson from our Nets, one of our NetSuite Solutions Architects. It's based out of our Auckland office. And she'll be taking us through um, a little bit about NetSuite, a bit of a live demonstration today as well. So who is Fusion 5? Some of you may not know us. A uh, brief introduction to who we are and where we fit into the Oracle NetSuite ecosystem is probably appropriate at this point. We're a business applications and innovation company whose goal it is to empower our clients to innovate, profit, and grow. To do this, we design solutions utilizing a combination of some of the best of breed tools and platforms in the market, such as Oracle NetSuite. And in addition to that, we also engineer solutions with software applications, which we design and create specifically for ANZ businesses. Supporting our applications business, we also have an innovation and integration pillar who focus on utilizing cutting edge technology in areas such as AI, machine learning, internet of things, as well as supporting our integrations with other platforms as well. We have a managed services pillar that also supports our clients through their entire technology ecosystem from desktop environments through to hosting, endpoint security and help desk. We aim to be a complete technology and applications partner to our clients. We have experienced 18 years of growth now. We have over 500 employees across our nine offices in Australia and New Zealand, with over 1,000 customers that we partner with across ANZ. Today, we're focusing on Oracle NetSuite. Fusion 5 is the largest partner in the JPAC region uh, for Oracle NetSuite, and we're honored to be recognized as Partner of the Year for 2021. That's overall Partner of the Year. We're proud to have been Oracle NetSuite's JPAC Partner of the Year now for six continuous years, and we have the most passionate and experienced NetSuite team around. Very, very proud of our team here. If you have any questions about Fusion 5, our partnerships, or any areas where we can assist your business, please just pop them into the chat or contact us, and we can follow up at the end of this webinar. So as we approach an ERP project, we can phase the implementation into steps with the intent of helping you go live rapidly on your new platform and as rapidly as is practical to ensure that you're getting value quickly out of your new investment. From here, we can look at an implementation stairway, turning on additional features and processes or incorporating other applications that you currently utilize into the NetSuite core set of functionalities at a pace that is sustainable by the business and by your resources. By utilizing this approach, we really help to avoid implementation fatigue, which can be a big factor at the end of a large implementation project. 
And where we've tried to bite off everything in a single phase. So keeping a fresh mindset and mentality around the project whilst enjoying the benefits of the core applications that NetSuite brings to the day-to-day -day business and also your day-to-day -day business processes. It's also important to choose a business platform that has scope to expand with your business no matter what your growth trajectory is. And that's really important at the outset. You don't want to be going through this again in three years, right? So we rapidly, so how do we rapidly go live to ensure that you get the benefits from phase one? So by utilizing NetSuite's suite success product and methodology, we start off with a version of NetSuite that's been tailored for your industry, meaning that right out of the box, we've got thousands of hours of pre-configured roles, dashboards, KPIs, reports, and metrics, all of which are relevant to your industry, so you can really hit the ground running. From there, we help you align your day-to-day -day business practices with industry-leading practices, and these practices have been developed by Oracle and NetSuite across thousands of successful implementations across a 20-year history. This does a couple of things. Firstly, it ensures that we can go live as rapidly as possible without having to reinvent the wheel for every project that we undertake. And secondly, by adopting leading practices, it ensures that your business is operating in a closely aligned method to how global ERP platforms operate out of the box. This ensures that you can get maximum benefit from new releases, uh, features and enhancements. And another thing that's often overlooked is going through this process also aligns your business with the labor market. And this ensures that when you're onboarding new hires, they're entering a business with processes and systems that they're more likely to be familiar with. Obviously, the flow and effect from that is this is going to reduce the amount of time that they need to train up and be effective. So, Embarking on an ERP implementation, current proofing your business by going live as rapidly as possible on leading practices while having a clear understanding of what your future rollout looks like requires a plan. And of course, this is where the stairway implementation approach comes into play. Taking this example for uh, the wholesale distribution business and the, and, and the wholesale distribution industry, we can kick off phase one by replacing base financials, implementing CRM and order processing, adopting leading standards for inventory management, expanding our reach to allow our customers to interact with our business directly via self-serve portals. Now, that first phase might look different for every business and that'll be part of our alignment process, but the idea is to go live as quickly as possible with what you actually need to operate today. From there, we can go down a stairway approach. So as we continue to navigate our way up the ladder, we might be looking into, say for example, launching a B2B commerce website or utilizing built-in e-commerce modules to improve customer interaction. We might be wanting to improve procurement processes and management or manage rebates to our suppliers, or sorry, manage rebates to our customers. Um, we might want to improve order distribution and dispatch um, by incorporating warehouse management and other leading practices around that, maybe even introduce some people or payroll in phase two. So as we continue to navigate our way up the ladder, we can introduce new functionality in a measured and a manageable way without overwhelming our resources. In this fashion, we can bolster the capability of our business systems now to deal with present capabilities and challenges, while ensuring that we also have a plan to tackle what's happening in the future and a plan on how to approach it. Obviously, we need to keep the future roadmap as flexible as possible as our business priorities change. So what might be on your future roadmap to start with may not necessarily be what your journey looks like as market conditions change, your business change, but it gives you the ability to understand where it is that you're going. So to talk a little bit more about that, I'd really like to hand over to Chloe now to take you through our NetSuite demo. So Chloe, I'm going to hand over to you. Great, thank you, Joel. So good morning or good that. afternoon. Thank you very much. So what I wanted to talk about in our webinar today was from a current and future proofing perspective, how NetSuite can help you. And here are some areas that I thought I would focus on first of all. So adapting quickly. 
So that way, if something changes within your business, if you bring on a new revenue stream, or if you even go through an acquisition or merger process, NetSuite can help you to adapt your legal entity structure or your segmentation approach so that you can get up and running with that new revenue stream or legal entity as soon as possible. So what goes hand in hand with that is responding to changes in the market, in the current climate, rapidly and flexibly. So that ties in quite nicely with being able to have your people working from home. So as we know, we've had a lot of restrictions around the world with the lockdowns that are still going on in some places, but are starting to lighten a bit in others. But being able to operate on a truly cloud platform enables your employees to be productive from home, to get all the information that they need and to be able to do their jobs, even though they're not potentially in the office all the time. Another thing that NetSuite can help you achieve is cloud scalability. So Joel touched on there the stairway approach. So we do encourage going live as soon as possible with what we like to call the minimum viable product. So what do you absolutely need on day one? And what can we potentially push out into future phases so that the implementation is live as soon as possible and you can realize your investment as soon as possible? NetSuite has different modules that you can enable at different times, so we can make sure that we have chunked out our implementation and that we've got a realistic timeline for bringing those functionalities online for our teams. And finally, in order to make sure that you've got a good handle on how things are going and also where you want things to go in the future, it's important to be able to perform data analysis and by using NetSuite as the platform, you've got one single database and that translates to one single source of the truth. So that way you can be sure that you've got all the data that you need to get the insights that are gonna help you make those decisions. So before I jump into NetSuite for the live demo, I wanted to pop this infographic up here. I think it's a good, visual uh, to explain how from a NetSuite perspective, oh sorry wrong screen, we've, we're presenting a unified data business intelligence tool. That means that we've got a single unified platform, within that platform we're making the most of the databases and the modules that we get out of the box, but it also gives us flexibility to be able to integrate other best of breed systems into NetSuite. What this allows for is a consolidated database of all of our data so that we can interrogate that data in one system and get the information that we need to make those decisions. Joel also talked about the Suite Success approach from an implementation perspective. And what NetSuite offers from that standpoint is a purpose-built solution from day one that matches up with your industry and the types of functionality that you require to be successful. So I'm just going to come out of this PowerPoint now and move into NetSuite. Great. So we're in NetSuite now. I have logged in to a wholesale distribution account and you can see here in the top right hand corner, I am logged in as a CFO. When you do go live with the Suite Success implementation, you get a lot of these pre-built dashboards and metrics and KPIs from day one out of the box. So you can see that as soon as you come in for the day at work, you log in, whether that be at home or in the office, you've got all the important information that you need at your fingertips. You can see what you need to action right away in this reminders portlet here. We've got a lot of graphs and graphical representations of our data. We might be interested to see how much of our sales are coming from new customers that we've recently acquired versus our existing customer base. We've got some powerful KPI graphs here as well. So we can see how we're tracking from an AP and AR perspective to help manage our cash flow. And the dashboard also helps us navigate within NetSuite nice and easy. It minimizes clicks and it makes it really easy for us to find the information that's important to us. So I wanted to talk about how we can leverage One World, and that's NetSuite's global financial management tool, where we can have multiple legal entities within NetSuite and run consolidated reporting. You can see here on the sub sub subsidiary navigator portlet, we can see our current legal entity structure. Let's say, for example, we went out to market, we saw an opportunity to acquire a new business. The ability to bring that into NetSuite is really simple. 
and that business doesn't have to be in the same country or jurisdiction that you're currently operating in. NetSuite is a global ERP, so it's really easy to bring on those new acquisitions within NetSuite as a platform. So I've created a wee shortcut to my subsidiary or legal entity list. So you can see how easy it is to create a new legal entity or subsidiary within NetSuite and then see that represented within your structure. So if I come here to my shortcuts, my star, my favorites, I can come to subsidiaries. So at the moment, I'm operating within Australia with my ABC and my DCE company. Let's say I have an opportunity to acquire a company within New Zealand. I can create a new subsidiary nice and easily. There is a lot of information that you can capture on a subsidiary, but to make it nice and easy, let's call this our NZ company. And then really all we need to do is identify which country this legal entity resides. So I'm going to pick New Zealand. And then what their reporting currency is. So let's choose NZD. And it's really as simple as that. So we can create our new legal entity. That's going to attach it to our current legal entity structure. And because NetSuite is a global ERP, it knows that in New Zealand, we use the New Zealand tax nexus. So all of that is set up by default for you. And then if we come back to our subsidiary navigator, give it a quick refresh, we can see that our new entity is sitting there underneath our parent company, ready to transact and report against. Within NetSuite, we have lots of different ways that we can segment our financial data. One of those ways is by using what we like to call a class segment, commonly referred to as a revenue stream or a product category. And again, if you reach out into a new revenue stream and you want to start budgeting and transacting against that new stream, it's as simple as creating a new class record, much like we did with the new subsidiary record. So in my CFO role, it all lives under my financial menu. I'm coming to a list of my financial data and I'd like to create a new class. So I can open that one up. I can see I already have classes for A, B, C, and D, nice and simple, but I actually want to expand now into class E. I've got a new product offering and I want to be able to create new stock codes or items and track my revenue against it. So again, I'm going to create class E. This one could potentially only apply to my new New Zealand company. So I can limit those segments based on my legal entities so I can have different values available for my different subsidiaries. And again, it's as easy as that. As soon as that class record has been created, that product category, that revenue stream, it's there right away for us to load up our budgets, to start transacting against, and to start coding our items master or our stock codes to that particular revenue stream. Another thing that I wanted to show on our demonstration today was how we can create custom records or custom data tables within NetSuite to extend the ability to capture particular types of data. One scenario that we see quite a bit is when people are incurring work in progress, they might be putting in a software implementation, so a, a new NetSuite system is going live, for example, or in the wholesale distribution space, they may be investing in a new warehouse. Often they'll be incurring a lot of expenses via journals or via supplier invoices, and there's no easy way to be able to consolidate those and say, well, actually, that goes towards that new software implementation or the new warehouse that I'm looking to build. What we can do within NetSuite is create what's called a custom record. That gives us the ability to ring fence those expenses by, let's call it, a work in progress record, and that gives us more powerful reporting capabilities. So I've created the WIP record ahead of time, so I'll just show you what that looks like. And again, I've made a wee shortcut, so it's nice and easy to find. So if I come to my work in progress list, We've essentially created a new data table within our unified platform that we can track data against. So we can see we've got a new warehouse and a software implementation. And we can consolidate lots of different data into this particular record. So let's say I'm incurring expenses for my new warehouse. 
I'm coding my expenses to this new warehouse work in progress segment. And then I can start to track how I'm performing with what I've currently incurred from an expense perspective against what I budgeted for this CapEx spend so that when it comes time to capitalize this work in progress, I know how much I'm going to put onto my fixed asset register, for example. By creating data tables within NetSuite and creating those interdependent relationships between other records, be that your customers, your suppliers, or your transactions, you give yourself additional ways to interrogate your data. To finish the demo this afternoon or this morning, I wanted to show you how we can take this work in progress record, the data that we're capturing it against it, and visualize it using NetSuite's powerful analytics tool. So analytics is a new business intelligence analysis function that NetSuite has brought on board. It's always being updated and it's a great way to visualize your data and get that data out to your people and deploy it on everyone's dashboards as well. So I've created a quick work in progress workbook so you can take a look and, and see what it looks like. What's really great about the workbooks is that we can have the different visualizations. So we might wanna see it in a graph, potentially that's an easier way for people to digest information. We can also deploy these onto people's dashboards. So here we're keeping a track of how our spend is going to our budget. So for our software implementation work in progress, we can see that we've spent 5,400 of our $100,000 budget. So a really quick way to see how we're tracking with our balance to our budget. And likewise, if you wanna see a little bit more detail, what we can do is present more of a breakdown at a transaction level. Because it is a single database, everything is connected. So we can go from one record to another, drill through capability without having to open lots of different pages at the same time. So we can see that we've had some bills come in against those work in progress items. That's the record that we created within NetSuite. And really easily, we can drill through and interrogate that transaction a little bit more to make sure that we're happy with where it's landing and that it's been coded to the correct work in progress account. So we can see here that we've got a bill come in. It was for the electrical fit out of our new warehouse. And again, we've got all of that drill through capability and we've consolidated that data based on our work in progress code. And again, we've got that drill through capability there too. So we can see how we're tracking against our budget. So that's just one example of how we can create our own records within NetSuite, make them dependent or interdependent with other transactions that are available out of the box so that we can ring fence or consolidate different types of data to make reporting easier and to get the insights that we need. And just to recap on our dashboard as well, we can always come home within NetSuite. The great thing about a Suite Success implementation is that you get the wealth of pre-built analytics reports and KPIs out of the box. So as soon as you start transacting within NetSuite, you can keep your finger on the pulse of those important metrics and you've got that visibility so you can make those decisions depending on, on how things are going. So that is me for the demo today. I'll just stop now quickly to see if there were any questions. Thanks, Chloe. Uh, at this stage, I don't think we have any questions that have come through as yet. Great. However, if there are, um, obviously, please make sure that you put them in the chat. I, uh, just... I told there's a question in the um, question section. Yeah, I can section. see it. I'm just trying, trying to read it. Can you read it, Karen? Sure. Can NetSuite integrate with logistics companies such as Main Freight to track the orders? Yes, absolutely. We do a lot of integrations with those freight or courier companies two ways. So we can send the orders to the logistics company, but also retrieve track and trace information. So we can send that out with our confirmation emails to our customers. Yeah, thanks Thank for you. the question. I'm having a bit of an issue with my interface. It wasn't showing that the question Probably sorry about that. So yeah, Main Freight obviously is a uh, 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 a very specific one as well. Main Freight have their own um, 
their own relatively complex system, but we have done uh, many integrations with mainframe before, so yeah, definitely. And there are there are also some pre-built connectors out of the box for quite a lot of um, quite a lot of the major freight companies as well. So I'm definitely happy to discuss that more with anybody if they have more specific questions around that. There's another question in there as well. Um, Karen, I'll get you to read that as well because it's just not showing up on my interface for some reason. Um, Joel, I can't see it either. Um, it says something about Salesforce. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, I, I, I think I can see it now. Integration with Salesforce, yes. Um, we do have integration with Salesforce out of the box utilizing a pre-built connector. Uh, the pre-built connector is provided by a company called Soligo. There's a few different versions of the integration with Salesforce. So the base version will just do standard quote records and then you have um, sort of the medium edition and the most advanced edition will do things such as subscription billing type integration as well. So there's three levels of, of, of integration that exists with Salesforce out of the box. Um, and they just require the Salesforce uh, integration platform. So we can definitely um, uh, have a further chat with you about that as well. Uh, do we have any other questions? Doesn't look like we do. However, if you want to continue adding questions into that box, please feel free to do so. Uh, thank you very much, Chloe. Um, I will take over presentation again now. Great, thank you. And I will stop screen sharing. No worries. So um, that's fantastic. Thanks very much for running through that demonstration. Uh, we're going to move across to our conversation with the customer now. Um, so Gumala is a really fitting example of how um, utilization of NetSuite's platform has enabled simplification and optimization of day-to-day -day tasks in the organization. And it's demonstrative of how Fusion 5 can partner with businesses to solve business program, I'm sorry, business problems, utilizing a range of capabilities and software solutions and utilizing NetSuite as the core platform. So I'd like to hand over to Karen Prinsloo now, as she has a conversation with Mitesh Patel from Gumala. Um, so over to you, uh, Karen and Mitesh. Thank you very much, Joel. Hey. And a very, very warm welcome and hello to Mitesh Patel. <clears throat> Matesh is the IT Systems Administrator at Gumala Aboriginal Corporation. And just a bit about Gumala, they are a member organization, a not-for-profit organization that was created in 1996 to represent the collective interests of the traditional owners in the Pilbara region in Western Australia. And that followed on negotiations with Hammersley Iron, who was wholly owned by Rio Tinto. So Gumala has become one of Australia's leading Aboriginal corporations. They offer a wide range of transformation initiatives um, that they implement, and it's for the ultimate benefit of the lives and futures of the traditional owners of the land. So Matesh, tell us a little bit about your role at Gumala and specifically NetSuite. Yeah, sure. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, Mites Patel. Uh, I am an IT system administrator in Gumla, and this is my eight years going there. Uh, my main responsibility to look after day, day by day uh, IT in Gumla, uh, and also I am uh, responsible for all applications running in the Gumla, and NetSuite is one of them. So my main job for the NetSuite is to set up and manage the user account, set up their security rules and apply the proper delegation there. And also as um, uh, Karin says, like uh, we are running uh, programs for our members. So I'm responsible to set up those programs. Like few programs are running on financial year base and few programs are running on like another time frame, like the education, uh, tape program which are running from October to February, some are running from January to July. So I, I am responsible to set up those programs in the NetSuite system. Uh, and also I am responsible to working with all different departments manager to apply their uh, enhancement for their department in the NetSuite. So that is my little bit NetSuite. Yep. Thanks, Matesh. And um, <laughs> 
how and why did Kamala decide specifically on NetSuite as the ERP and why did you choose Fusion 5 as a partner? Yeah, sure. Uh, we used to have a different system for our CRM, finance and payroll, which was on premise and also have their own server with their own database. So around like four years ago, our management decided to move on from on-premise solution to something for cloud-based solution. So during that time, I was a part of the project steering committee. And what we have done, like uh, we have reviewed a detailed report presented by consultant, uh, breaking down from the functional fee, cost, licensing, and validity claim from vendors in response to our business need. And what we found that NetSuite is a really feature-rich, flexible system, which provide end-to-end -end, uh, result with very user-friendly interface. Mm -hmm. And also we found like the Fusion 5 is a local partner who understood our requirement really well. And from there, we can trust a long-term relationship with them. So at the end, management decided to go with NetSuite and Fusion 5 as a local partner. Good choice, Matej, good choice. What would you say the impact of that was on the organization? Um, so, so for instance, what was your biggest wins? Yeah, sure. Like, I, uh, I would say there are three biggest impact until now from uh, our organization from the NetSuite. So I can break down so everybody can easily understand. The very first biggest impact is on our CRM system. So it has really improved the efficiency and also the user experience. So uh, as I said, you know, I have, we have to set up a different programs. So our members needs to apply funding through the programs. So before our, on our previous CRM system, it used to take around 20 minutes to finish off one application. But now with the NetSuite is only takes around five minutes. So it has really reduced our qualitative time for all our staff because our CRM team, it's like 10 to 15 staff are working on the on the CRM system all the time. So it has really reduced the qualitative time for not only for the team, but all over the life for the whole staff. Uh, the second biggest impact is on our AGM process. So every year we are running AGM where we used to have a <clears throat> registration process manually. So like uh, as a rule, whenever our members join to our AGM, we have to pay them for the consultation fee. So before we have to like manually print all the members database, and whenever they are coming for the meeting, we have to like find through their name and then they have to sign on the paper. But what we have introduced last two years, we have set up an um, online registration process through NetSuite, where we can find members directly from their date of birth or from their first name or last name. We verify them and we can online signature on the iPad or on the mobile app, and they, they can straight away join to the AGM, which, which is, uh, which has reduced our time and also improved the members' experience as well. And the third impact, it has reduced our ongoing hosting and licensing costs because NetSuite, uh, it's supporting our CRM, finance, payroll, and HR on the one license. So it has already reduced a lot of costs, our ongoing costs for the licensing thing. Thanks, Matesh. I must just apologize to everybody for my vicious dog barking. Um, so what would you say the standout feature of um, that you love about NetSuite? Sure. Uh, I would say uh, all our four main business application or system like CRM, finance, payroll, and HR system are on the same platform now, and they are synced live with each other. So I would say the NetSuite is now our single source of truth. That is the standout feature for the NetSuite. So from now onwards, we do not have any gazing game. So because 
all the database are sync and connect lively with each other, we can generate all the programs and finance report uh, on time and live, which are really help management to make decisions for the future programs. That's great, Matesh. Um, and I understand our, our next suite innovations, our Fusion 5 innovations team has built a membership portal that is tightly integrated with NetSuite. And I think that changed a lot of things for, for Gumala. Tell us a little bit more about the impact that had. Yeah, sure. Uh, the members portal is well received by our members. The key success uh, for this members portal is a high level of adoption, was simplicity and the design. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, like before when men, uh, members need to apply for their program funding, they have to either call to the office or they have to uh, email us or they have to fax us or they can walk into the office and then they can fill out the form and then, then they can apply for the programs. But since members portal has set up, uh, they can apply the program's funding anytime 24 by 7 as long as they are connected to the internet through any device, doesn't matter if it's a mobile, iPad or laptop, PC, anything, as long as they are connected to the internet and once they can log in with their username and password, they can apply through the funding. Uh, and uh, I would say like, you know, your, mem uh, your um, innovation team has done a great job here because I can see it has really impacted every single day of our members life because before they have to rely on our office time which is like half past eight to five you know which is not suitable for many of the members because all our members are now they are all over the world you know before they used to be are only on western australia but now they are all over the australia and few members they are living in usa in canada in new zealand so they don't have to rely on our office time. So they can apply their funding, they can check their balance 24 by seven. And I would say like the innovation team has done a great job here. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, just lastly, um, so it sounds like you did future proof and current proof the business. What is next for Gumala from a technology point of view? Yeah, sure, look. For Gumala, uh, technology is always a core for all our service offered at Gumala. I believe we have a strong foundation right now and we have a clear vision for our future. So we will continue invest in the technology. We want to improve our communication with our members uh, to improve decision making with analytics and improve our document management system. But I still believe, you know, I. Uh, I don't believe any organization is a future proof. It, it's like a journey and no one should stop. You know, it's like the step-by-step -step process. So just take one task and make sure it is set up properly and then go to the next one. Yeah, sure. I think we know that from a technology perspective. So um, last thing, uh, so the previous one was the second last thing. Any advice you could give to companies um, that is embarking on a process of looking at an ERP solution? Yeah, sure. Uh, for me, keep it simple. Be realistic and clearly define your requirement because so many people are like, you know, dreaming all the time. So which wouldn't work in the reality. So for me, always keep it simple. Be realistic. Uh, be re realistic and clear with your requirement. And also the key for any project success is to hire a really good project, internal project manager and trust your project team. Thank you, Matesh. That's fantastic advice. Uh, thank you very much, Matesh. Thank you very much, Karen, for going through that. Some excellent advice okay. there from your perspective as well. A fantastic organization for us to, wor to work with. So thank you very much for your time today and, and, and taking everyone through that. So all that really remains is for us to thank you very much for your time today. We hope that you found this session informative. Um, obviously, do feel free to reach out to us if you have any other questions about anything we covered today or anything else that uh, might be burning in your mind. Um, 
once again, if you're not following us, you can find us on LinkedIn at Fusion5, or you can visit us on fusion5.com.au or .co.nz. Um, we've got plenty of resources there around all of the different products and services, as well as lots of learning and development and webinar resources, such as the one that, that you viewed today. Uh, be sure to look out for our next webinar coming your way on the 25th of November. Uh, covering cybersecurity, the unpleasant truth, uh, basically covering everything that around cybersecurity in a SaaS world, changing environment, uh, unknown risk factors to consider when operating SaaS applications and working from home. So uh, we've got a panel of experts from our cybersecurity division joining us there, so make sure you don't miss out on that one. So thank you very much everyone for joining us today, and we look forward to catching you on our next webinar.